So I think one new exciting development uh, is the um, publication of the census study um, that a lot of people are talking about here. Um, so it was published earlier this year and looked at patients with systemic sclerosis-related interstitial lung disease. They had to have at least 10% fibrotic change on their um, CT scans. Um, and the um, study intervention of nintetinib versus placebo was made um, even on top of standard of care therapy with mycophenolate. And it showed a significant reduction in the rate of decline of forced vital capacity, which is the primary endpoint, uh, in those patients that were treated with nintetinib. So this is an exciting development for those patients with um, scleroderma-related ILD that have a fibrotic component. It's an additional therapy for an otherwise sometimes progressive disease um, that they can now have access to and maybe benefit from. The census study was presented at the American Thoracic Society meeting in May in Dallas with a concomitant publication in the New England Journal of Medicine. And what the census study did was looked at nintenonib as a treatment for systemic sclerosis related interstitial lung disease. Um, the inclusion criteria were pretty broad and included patients with FVCs beyond, I believe it was 40%, and so included some patients with more severe disease. Uh, patients had to have more greater than 10% of fibrosis on their chest CT, and the primary endpoint was the FVC at 52 weeks. This was a, a positive study in terms of changing the rate of decline in the FVC in the group that got nintenonib. What was interesting as well is a commonly used therapy, although actually not approved for scleroderma, is mycophenolate, but that has really evolved to standard of care and about 50% of the patients in the census study were on mycophenolate. So there was a subgroup analysis of patients on and off mycophenolate. And even for those patients on mycophenolate, there did appear to be a salutary benefit with the addition of nintenonib. So an unequivocally positive study. It did miss out on some of the secondary endpoints. One of the big secondary endpoints was the Rodnan skin score, which me measures skin thickness in scleroderma. That was negative, unfortunately. But nonetheless, the uh, medication, Nintenonib, was granted FDA approval uh, for the treatment of systemic sclerosis associated interstitial lung disease. So that kind of widens, widens the spectrum for us as clinicians in terms of therapies that we are able to offer these patients.